You're scouring the internet, trying to find the right image for an ad or a project, and when you do, it's black and white. Sure, you could spend hours trying to manually paint the color back in, or you could just use Photoshop's colorize filter. This handy dandy colorize filter can be helpful for a myriad of stuff. Adding color to black and white stock images, adding color to old family photos, adding color to grayscale paintings to give you a head start, and much more. Welcome to Photoshop Icebreakers, where I'll break the ice between you and Photoshop's color eyes so that your creativity can break free. Bring into Photoshop your black and white picture, go into Filter, select Neural Filters, and a new tab will pop up. What is this new screen that popped up? These are Photoshop Neural Filters. They're the new generation of Photoshop filters, like the classics, like Liquify, Filter Gallery. Now they leverage machine learning, which allow us to simply click on the switch of color eyes and in the blink of an eye, Photoshop added color to the whole image, saving us a lot of steps. Then it's just a matter of pulling these levers left and right to adjust saturation, temperature, etc. and clicking OK to apply it. Then we can create a new layer on top of that, set it to color, and using a brush, we can hold Alt and click around to copy colors and paint any things that we didn't quite like or that we think are still a little too gray. This is supposed to be a product photo shoot, so it's not about this guy. So let's go on Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and use one of these classic filters to, you know, get him a little bit out of focus. And let's bring something else on top. Another image, also black and white, of our product in question. That's the great thing about all these neural filters. They're not limited to people. We can go there on filter, neural filter, and select colorize again, and bring colors into this very abstract almost product photo. And it does a pretty good job. You can once again tweak all these different settings of color balance and saturation and click OK when you're done. You can then use your favorite selection too, such as quick or object selection to outline the product itself on its stand and create a mask. And then it's just a matter of finding a good position to place it within the composition. And voila. And sure, we could stop here, but a Photoshop project's never done with a single tool. So let's take a look at a couple other things and push this to the finish line. We can use blending modes and adjustment layers to help bring these two disparate images together a little bit more. For example, by using a multiply layer to paint some shadows, some adjustment color layers to bring the palette together a bit more, or straight up using a color blending mode layer to bring a little bit of those blue hues into the product. And then we can add some flare by adding some little flare, creating a black layer, going to filter, render, lens flare and setting that layer to screen and adjusting the position. So, you know, we're being our own JJ Abrams here and giving people something to catch their eye right at the product. But our product need a tag and title to match, so let's hop on Adobe Fonts. They thankfully have a luxury section, which is perfect for that. We can scroll till we find one that works for this, activate it, and it automatically syncs on Photoshop thanks to the Creative Cloud. And there we go, we have our Oh the Photoshop. Uh, our own Photoshop theme cologne. Um, then we can jump in and find a bit more modern font for the tag of this product. Then select it within our fonts choices. And then with a couple more tweaks, we have something worthy of luxury. Oh, the Photoshop. Fix your sand, fix your look. If you wanna know how to make a label like that, easily editable and blending so nicely, Take a look at our Photoshop Icebreakers episode on blending mode. One cool thing of these neural filters is that you can really stretch their intent and what you can do with them. For example, this picture of a picture of my great great mother, uncle, and aunt. I can use Ctrl T to edit it and then paint in a little bit over that glare, turn it fully black and white, and then use the neural filters to bring this once black and white family photo into color. My grandma will love seeing this at the end of the year. Conversely, if you're a painter like me that paints black and white, instead of manually, liberally painting all the colors on top on a color layer and ending up with something that's kind of flat, what you can do instead is bring the black and white image and just add a colorized filter to it. It will give you a great base with tons of color variation. Then you can add a color layer on top to paint over any details that didn't quite fit what you intended. But that's it for today. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions, what other neural filters you'd like to see us explore, and what do you think you can pull off with Colorize? See you in the next time on the next Photoshop Icebreakers.